the two charts that you can see here have the exact same data yet one chart it's not very clear what the message is while the other one it's very obvious it's about the trend of beta ink so you can see data visualization can make all the difference between having a very clear message and getting everyone confused that's why in this video we'll go over the essentials of data visualization going over color theory picking the right charts and writing effective titles. First up, let's focus on choosing the right chart type. And as you probably know, there's a ton of different options out there. So here's some of the best ones. For any kind of relationship, you might want to consider a scatter plot, or alternatively, if you have more than two variables, maybe a bubble chart can make sense for you, where you have the bubble itself being the third variable. If you want to show how data is distributed, then a histogram is probably the way to go. As you can see, you can do it either in column format or in line format. Then we have seeing changes over time. And for this, for showing something like a trend, typically people go with a column chart when you have less data points, while they might prefer something like a line chart when you have more. For example, if it's the stock price of a company where you have a share price every day, then you might opt for a line chart while if you want something on a quarterly basis, then a column chart can make sense. Then we have relative comparison, which is usually out of 100, and it might be for something like what's Apple's market share within the smartphone market. And finally, we have absolute comparisons, which would help us understand things like how much did product A sell versus product B. This isn't an extensive list, but it hopefully gives you a better idea of when to use which type of chart. To test ourselves, let's take a look at some data over here in this table. You can see we have some Apple products and quantity that we're selling, let's suppose. And we want to see what chart showcases this data best. And feel free to pause this video and give it a try on your own. Just take a look at it and see what you would pick and comment it down below. Alright, so a common pick here would just be to use a pie chart. But in my opinion, this isn't the best choice, in part because we have one too many categories. So ideally, you want to have around five or less. So this is a few too many. And also, it's kind of hard to tell the scale. In this case, the iPhone is supposed to be double the size of the Vision Pro and the iPad, but it's not that obvious to see. Instead, a better alternative would be to use some kind of a bar chart like this one over here, or even a column chart like this one would work just fine as well. Let's take a look at another example with a different table. As you can see over here, we have a timeline of days for some kind of project, it seems like. So you might think of using a bar chart over here. You can see what that looks like. It obviously does say that the testing is the biggest phase, so that's quite positive. That said, it's not something that's cumulative, right? And it should be, in this case, after 14 days, we would then unlock the meeting phase and then the testing and so forth. So instead, maybe something like a waterfall chart makes more sense. As you can see here, the 14 builds on the four and then the 20 and so forth up till we get to a total. So it adds a bit more value there. Similarly, we could use a Gantt chart. As you can see over here, we go from one phase to the other and they all add on top of each other. And before we continue with data visuals, it's important that we're all on the same page when it comes to data analysis. And a great way to do that is with HubSpot's free Introduction to Data Analysis PDF report. They're kindly providing us with this free 50-page report, which you can download using the link in the description below. In the file, you'll find a comprehensive breakdown of what data analysis is, what types of data analysis there are, and some best practices as well. It's not just a report full of text though, it also has supporting visuals to make sure you understand. This resource is great if you're a beginner, as well as if you're a bit more of an advanced user who's already taken their fair share of stats classes, like myself. I personally find it most useful to refresh my memory and make sure I'm using the best practices when analyzing data. So if you want to check this out, head over to a link in the description below to download this completely free report from HubSpot to level up your data analysis skills and thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Moving on to colors and formats, and over here you can see we have a simple table with the months and the sales in millions. You can see what that looks like in this chart. And overall, there's nothing wrong with adding more than one color, but in this case, it has to save some kind of message, which doesn't seem to be the case here. It just seems to have colors for the sake of making it colorful. 
So let's go ahead and change this all to dark blue. That's a bit more of a toned down color, which makes it a bit less distracting. Now let's work on these grid lines over here. Now, do they add a lot of value? I don't quite think so, so I'm just going to get rid of them like so. And then with this axis over to the side, do we need it? Well, it's debatable. Right now we don't have anything on the columns, so maybe we do. Or we could instead hit right click and add data labels. Now maybe we just don't need these to the side, so we can either delete them, like so, you can see it looks quite clean there, or the other thing you could do is just change the gap widths. So I would go over to Format Axis, and from here, instead of using the measure as 2, maybe we can change that to 5 or so, like that, so it's a bit less distracting. Finally, you don't want to make the white space over here too big, so we can always select the different columns, and as the gap width over here, let's say we go for something like 80, just to make it slightly thicker. To show you some examples of companies doing this in the real world, over here you can see some slides by Boston Consulting Group, which is a consultancy. You can see there that for each of these three charts, they decide to add a data label and also a y-axis on the side. That said, the gap there is quite big, so it's in 20%. Also, the colors here are all very consistent in this green, and it seems like they've also gotten rid of the grid lines. In cases where you have too many column values, like over here in this chart by the Financial Times, they've opted not to add data labels, as that would just be too overwhelming in information, and instead they've added a y-axis on the right-hand side. Also, you can see the grid lines there are very few, and they're also in a very light color. Let's take a look at formatting for a very different type of visual, which is a table like this one over here. And tables like this can be useful if you wanna be very precise with the data, so having the exact values like this, as well as when you're working with a lot of data and different columns. So most people, if they want to show what value is high or what value is low, they might just select all of this data, head over to conditional formatting, and go for something like a color scale, and just pick the first one by default, as you can see there. The problem here is that there's a ton of different colors, so it's not exactly clear what the focus is. Should we be looking at these red ones or these green ones? All of that can get a bit confusing, so instead, let's suppose that we're only focused on the high values. If that's the case, it might be easier just to have one color. As you can see here, we just picked green and it goes from white all the way to a dark green for the highest numbers. To do this, it's really just as simple as selecting the whole area again. And instead of going for the default up over here, we might want to choose something like this green color or just make up your own rule that is a bit more discreet. And just like before, here's another real-world example, in this case from The Economist, where you can see for the high values, they just decided to put them red, and as they get lower and lower, they reduce the opacity and change it to a colder blue color. Next up, we have a concept called pre-attentive attributes, which maybe you haven't heard of, but you've definitely seen. This is information that we process visually in an immediate manner, kind of like subconsciously. So over here, let's take a look at some examples of that. Maybe it can be to process something like the length of an area. You can see right there that one stands out very quickly. Same thing goes for the width or even the size of these bubbles. One clearly stands out. These three examples aren't that common in the business world, but there's some other ones like, for example, the color, which you'll see very often in charts. Same thing with the color opacity. Maybe you just wanna make one color slightly darker than the rest so it stands out. And finally, the same thing goes with an enclosure, where you might add some kind of rectangle, in this case it's dashed and in red, to make a certain column stand out. If we take a look at some real world examples of this, over here you can see a chart by the Financial Times, where they're clearly trying to get you to focus on the UK there, which is the only one that's a slightly different color. These attributes can also work in table format, as you can see over here for this Goldman Sachs visual, they've created that enclosure to emphasize the baseline column area. And finally, we have what are known as action titles. So if we look back at this visual that we saw earlier, it's got the title up there which is just describing what's happening, so the market share by company from 2016 to 2024. I'd say this is what most people would intuitively write, but there's also what are known as action titles. So let's take a look over here. This one now says that Beta Inc. outperformed competitors, gaining a 35% market share in 2024 
and as the subtitle, it describes things in more detail, so the actual description of the chart itself. The main difference here is that the title gives you a message, so there's some kind of implication and a key takeaway for what's happening. Adding an action title like this can also make sure that it doesn't get misinterpreted so that the message is very clear as to what exactly you're trying to convey. To look at some more real-world examples, in the case of the Financial Times, they make it very clear in that title what exactly is happening. So the UK has too few hospital beds compared to other industrialized countries, and in the subtitle, much like we saw, they actually describe that chart data. Same thing goes with this other chart from McKinsey in this case, where it says that despite some gains in the pipeline, women remain underrepresented across the corporate ladder, and in that subtitle there, they describe the chart in more detail. That's an overview of the essentials of data visualization, and if you want to learn to make some of these charts in Excel, check out this video over here, or take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and that subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.